five months from start to offer. Two different job portals. Four part OOP design problem. Two interviewers. Hey, how's it going? Phil's here. To be honest, if you want to learn about Amazon internships, all you have to do is to go to the CS Major subreddit and read for two hours. I'm sure you will learn more than what any random YouTube video can tell you. I interned at AWS in fall 2021, and there were a lot of things I wish I knew before I got started. So in this video, I'm going to try to tell you everything I know now so that you can have a better internship experience. So first, let's talk about the application process. The first thing you have to know is that when you apply actually matters. I applied to the SD internship in October and only got a response back in January. The interview process itself took another two months. So in total, it took me about five months from start to offer. That is a lot of time, right? If you apply too late, you might not even be able to get an offer because of limited headcounts. So my advice is that you apply as soon as possible. Amazon SD internships usually get posted around August of every year. So if you can, just apply right away. If you want a firm deadline to prepare, I would say apply by the end of September. Most of my friends did that and they got their offers pretty early. Now, another question is where you apply. And this is very simple, just apply online. Don't worry about any in-person events. Amazon is a huge company that recruits in a lot of universities and they would go to a lot of career fairs. However, if you have talked to Amazon at any career fair, you will know that they will tell you to apply online. This is my exact experience at CMU for two years. So if Amazon tells all the CMU students to apply online, they will probably tell you too as well. So you might just want to apply online and save some time at the career fairs. Now that you know when and where to apply, you might go to the online website to start looking for jobs. There are generally three types of engineering internships you can apply to. The first one and the one that everybody applies to is a normal SDE internship. At Amazon, software engineers are called software development engineers. That is exactly the same thing. There's no difference. One thing to know is that other subsidiaries of Amazon, such as Twitch and Audible, have their own recruiting websites. So if you want to work for those companies specifically, you should apply on their separate websites and their recruiting process might be a little different. So you should be mindful of that. The second program, which is relatively new, is what's called APP, the Amazon Propel program. It works the same way as the SD internship, but only for underclassmen. Think of it as the Amazon version of FBU or Google Step. So if you are a freshman or sophomore, I would say just apply to both and see which one you can get. I've heard that when some underclassmen apply to the normal SD internship, they actually got placed to the APP program, which is fine. There's not much difference. The third type of program is other technical internships. For example, sometimes a random data engineering internship might get posted and you can just apply to that. There's no conflict to how many jobs you apply to. But when you apply to any of those jobs, make sure you look out for the specific region or even the specific country that the job is posted in. Amazon hires interns globally, so I would recommend that you apply to internships that you, where you want to work. So just do a double take of job location when you apply to the internship. Now you have chosen the internship you want to apply to. The next thing to do is to actually apply. The application process is quite simple. You just have to sign up and follow the process. One thing that's kind of confusing is that for students, Amazon actually has two different job portals. Amazon University.jobs is not the same as Amazon.jobs. For students, the most important one is Amazon University.jobs. That is where you will store all your information and get all the updates from Amazon. So make sure you don't forget about your password and have to reset every time. <laughs> don't ask me why I know, it's just based on the real story. Another thing is that once you have signed up for your jobs account, make sure you keep your resume updated. I think that your interviewers will pull your resume from those job portals. So if you have account from previous years, make sure you re-upload your resume. Your application dashboard should be your point of contact from now on. It will show your job application status and you don't have to check every 10 minutes. I know, I've been there. It was pretty anxious to wait for the next update. If your job status changes, don't panic. Go check the CS Majors subreddit. I guarantee you someone has already made a post about the exact same thing. Also, the dashboard is where you will accept or decline your offer and see how much time you have to make that decision. So make sure you keep it safe and check it from time to time as well. Now you have already apply to the internship. The only thing you can do is to wait until your resume gets picked up. The wait might be frustrating, but that's the only thing you can do. There is nothing you can do to speed up the wait. So just keep practicing in the meanwhile. If you are lucky enough, in a few months, your application will actually get picked up. And now you start the interview process. For Amazon SD internships, there are two main components to the interview process. The first part is the online assessments, and the second part is the actual interview. 
The online assessments or the OAs are different every year, but they generally follow the same format. So if you want to get the most up-to-date information, you should check out the CS Major subreddit. It is very easy to see what Amazon's interview process is like every year because a lot of people share their Amazon interview experience every year. But generally, the OAs go like this. OA1 is usually debugging. You will be given some problems in a web-based editor and you will have to just debug the code. My only advice for this part is that you should learn Java or C beforehand and also C++ because when I took it, those are the only languages that were available. OA2 is your usual lead code problem. It's usually pretty easy if you practice and sometimes you might even get the same problems that your friends had. I guess Amazon just doesn't really have a big problem database. OA3 is what's called work simulation. Basically, you're given real life work scenarios and you have to choose what works best for that situation. It's mostly just multiple choices and fill in the blank and it's not really that challenging to do. So as long as you pay attention to the problems, you should be fine. Allegedly, OA3 is weighed more among all the OAs. So just pay some attention to it. My advice is that make sure you stay to a consistent work style. Whether to optimize the deadline or code quality, that's up to you. But make sure you have some kind of strategy when you look at the problems and just generally know how to work with people. If you pass the three OAs, you will be invited to the actual interview. For SD internships, you have one 45 minute interview. And for new grad positions, you might have one 45 minute or three 45 minute interviews, depending on your performance on the previous OAs. How is that determined? I have no idea. It's probably just totally random. One thing I want to mention is that before the interview, you should check out how to use Chime. Chime is basically just like Zoom, but for Amazon. The app itself is kind of janky and hard to use. I actually had my Chime app not working five minutes before the interview, and I had to troubleshoot and log in the web version, by which time I already lost five minutes. You might not think that's a big deal, but losing five minutes in a 45 minute tight interview is kind of problematic. So make sure you don't make mistakes like I did. The interview will be split into two portions. One of the portions will be technical, which is basically your lead code problems. There are a lot of ways to prepare for the technical problems. What I recommend to do is to just do the lead code. Using lead code to prepare will be enough. When I asked all my friends who got into Amazon, most of them got pretty typical graph problems like DFS and BFS. So make sure you brush up on graph problems. But in reality, what kind of problem you get is totally random. You might get very unlucky like me. I got a four part OOP design problem, which I barely finished. And it was kind of a miracle that I even passed the interview. But I guess I just got really lucky. I think for the actual interview, you can use any language you want. I remember my interviewer gave me the prompt in Java and I just did the whole thing in Python and they were okay with it. The other part of the actual interview will be the behavioral portion, which is actually quite easy to prepare. Amazon wants you to know what's called the LPs the leadership principles. The RPs are a list of principles that Amazon employees are expected to exercise. So my advice is that you prepare a story for each of the LPs and you should be fine. My experience is that your interviewer will specifically look for parts of your story that kind of fit the LP that they're looking for. So make sure you give them the kind of story that they're looking for and you should be fine. Funny thing, I actually had two interviewers. One of them is shadowy. So that was a little bit more nerve wracking than I thought. So if you see two interviewers, don't panic you will be fine. One of them might just be shadowing and you will not get double the amount of problems. But again, what kind of problems you're getting is absolutely random. There's no one who can tell you what problems you will get from the actual interview. So don't get too upset if you get a really hard problem. You could still get the offer even if you don't get the most optimal solution. So that's really all for the interview process. Once you finish the interview, there's nothing else you can do but wait. You might be like me and just got really anxious and just want to check it every single day. And I would say just don't. Give yourself some time, take a break and just wait for the email. At this point, there's nothing you can do to make your application better. So just take a break. Within a few weeks, you'll probably get a response. And if you're lucky enough, you will get the offer. And that is when you can start thinking about how you want to do with the internship. The Amazon SD internship is kind of the same as every other SD internship. There isn't that much difference. So I won't talk specifically about my experience, but there's still a few things you should think about before you accept the offer. The first thing is that you will not know what team you will be on for the internship. Your team selection is totally random depending on your skill set. You will not know your team until a few weeks or even a few months before. So there's no point to be too anxious about it. If you really want to get ahead, I would say learn more Java because Java is the most used language at Amazon. Another thing you can do to start early is to connect with your manager as soon as possible. That way you can get a feel of what kind of team you will be on and what kind of project you will be doing. Once you accept the offer, the rest is pretty easy to 
figure out. You can send questions to the official Amazon recruiting email and there will be a lot of documentation to get you started once you accept the offer. So I won't get too much into that. One last thing I want to mention is about taxes. If you are doing the SDE internship in the US, you are definitely going to file taxes. So make sure you keep a record of your W-2 as well as your relocation bonus. All of those will be needed when you file taxes next year. With that said, the interview process is actually pretty straightforward and there's a lot of information online to get you started. <clears throat> Editing field here. I realized that this video is getting too long, so I am making a part 2 of it. If you want to watch part 2, go click the link somewhere on the screen right now. And don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in part 2. Bye!